Some people consider triggering one of the more difficult parts of setting up a lab scope. Most of the people use automatic trigger. In this course, we've got to be thorough enough to make sure you can make adjustments to triggering if for some reason automatic triggering doesn't work. So let's start off by defining all these terms of what triggering is. A trigger point is defined as a voltage point that the signal must cross for the scope to begin writing the waveform on the screen. Now the trigger can be set for either positive slope when voltage is increasing or a negative slope when voltage is decreasing. Sometimes this is called rising or falling slope. Either way it's the same thing. Not only can we decide where we start writing it, we can decide what part of the screen, the starting position of the screen. And we're going to show you all these settings because there's times this can prove extremely beneficial. Let's get into defining some of these triggering. Now most automotive signals are very repetitive signals and in many cases they even relate to engine speed. The repetitive rate almost never is synchronized perfectly to the sweep rate of the DSO. The waveform may appear to float across the screen or bounce back and forth and we want the pattern synchronized so we can study it and get more detail. Now the input signal can be synchronized to the DSO sweep rate with triggering. As we say, auto triggering is what a lot of people use. When it works for you, great. When it doesn't, this is what we're going to do. We want the waveform to restart to rewrite at the same spot on the screen every time. So there's no unwanted movement unless something goes wrong with the signal. If the signal changes, we want to be able to detect that movement. The triggering synchronizes the signal so it begins rewriting at the same place every time and the result is a waveform that's displayed in the same location each sweep. Now we have several ways we can trigger. Internal triggering triggers from one of the channels and we have to select the channels. Specialized triggering can be things where we select a different input or we use a totally different input to the scope. Internal triggers is where the scope is triggering one of the channels we selected. It's using the input signal itself as the trigger and it synchronizes the signal. It can relate to an engine event, but you select the signal that will relate to what you want it to relate to. Let's talk about that when we get into it a little further. Here is our triggering on a falling volt, negative trigger it's called. Notice the arrow is going down. The zero milliseconds is where the pattern starts. We have moved it in slightly and we're going to talk about that starting position. Next we're going to look at a positive trigger. Now the zero position is when the voltage is going up. It's a rising voltage. Negative slope, it's going down. Positive slope is going up. The first thing everybody says is who cares? Why do I care about this? Well let's suppose we're trying to look at a signal like an injector. Well we triggered now on the falling slope, negative slope. That arrow there on this particular scope shows where you start. Because we see that, we get to see the full on time. We get to see the voltage spike right where we want to see it. If we started somewhere else, we would miss part of the signal. Here we get to see the complete thing. That's what triggering is all about. If we trigger like this and this pattern becomes unstable, it's because the voltage did not cross this magic triggering point. It would be a glitch would be a missing pulse. If you've ever looked for a bad driver in a PCM, you would find it by triggering like this and seeing it go away. But you've got to have triggering right if you're going to use that level of diagnostics. We have two examples. We know we're going to look at triggering the camshaft and the crankshaft. Let's talk about a few things. We're doing the camshaft sensor. In this case, it's red. We're doing the falling edge. We have three signals on the screen and we're going to talk about the stuff we have here. We're starting at the 12% from the edge. It's moved the pattern in slightly because we want to get to see all the stuff on the screen. We can position it wherever we need to. Defining what you're looking at here, red is cramshaft, blue is crank, and the black one is the injector itself. So triggering here, we're seeing that the identification of number one is done with a cam. Well, we knew that, and it shows us exactly how it's done. The problem we have with this pattern 
is the patterns are not the same width. Some pulse widths are wider than the others. The trigger we're looking at now is on the wide pulse. There's another falling edge just to the right of it on a narrow pulse. If the trigger moves over there, the whole pattern appears to jump. And what you're going to find on a signal like this is it's going to be hard to trigger. It's not going to give you a stable pattern. If we trigger on the crankshaft, it does the same thing. We have different widths of pulses up here. It could start on different ones. So what we've done, and we've shown you in the example, the only repetitive, non-varying signal on this screen is going to be or the injector pattern. If we trigger in the ejection pattern, it's going to write it every time. And if we get any jumps or missing pulses, it's because something is missing in either the crank or the cam. This is why we say sometimes you have to pick a signal that is stable relating to engine speed that will give you a stable signal. We could have triggered on number one cylinder and put a separate pickup on number one and done it that way to get a stable pattern. So when you can't get a stable pattern, don't assume it's entirely the fault of the way you have triggering. Any falling pattern will trigger this signal if it passes that voltage. If we pick channel C, we get a steady pattern. If we try to trigger, no matter how good we set it or how good the automatic is, this pattern will tend to jump around. But remember, come back to newobd2.com and review this section 